Hello and welcome to Film of the Century of the Week. I'm George Roth and I'm the host of this program here at Access Channel 5 Studios in Mayville. I'll be presenting films that are within the public domain of the United States for commercial free viewing, with new segments being added each Saturday each week. Today we take a look at a classic yet often forgotten film of the early, early era of sound cinema, the 1931 film Street Scene. As we've seen with our other two episodes, novels and plays were very popular to be remade into films during this time. Street Scene was originally a 1929 play by famous playwright Elmer Rice, who's most famous for also writing the 1923 play The Adding Machine. Rice himself wrote the screenplay when talk of a film version began to circulate around Hollywood at the time, and distribution was immediately secured by United Artists. Hungarian-American director King Vidor was chosen to direct. Vidor was a veteran of the film industry and directing, having previously directed 40 films as early as 1913. With an established director, a powerful production company, the original writer having penned the screenplay, and a budget of nearly $600,000, Street Scene was already set to be a hit. With the exception of one scene in a taxi cab, Street Scene takes entirely in a row of brownstones during a sweltering summer evening in New York City's Hell's Kitchen. The film deals with the Morant family as their problems unfold in front of the entire neighborhood and the effects of these problems are seen on all the characters of the feature. In the lead role of the young Rose Morant is actress Sylvia Sidney, who was only 21 years old at the time of the film's release. Sidney would go on to achieve a lengthy acting career throughout the 20th century and continued to act all the way up until her death in 1998. So join me as we take a journey to 1930's Hell's Kitchen in New York City in the 1931 King Vidor film, Street Scene. Ain't it just awful? I ain't got a dry stitch on me. 
I took off my shoes and my corset, but before I go to bed, I take a nice bath. Well, the trouble with the bath is, by the time you're all through, you're as hot as when you started. Good evening, Mrs. Olson. Evening. <laughs> awful hot, ain't it? Yes, awful. Mrs. Ferentino, my husband say, will you put the garbage in the dome right there? Sure, sure. Oh, phew. I'm just about ready to pass out. Mm -hmm. My baby is crying, crying. Yeah, it's the same with dogs. My queenie, she's just been laying around all day. My baby got no teeth. Don't tell me. If you was to know what I went through with my Vince... Hey, Mom! Why don't you go upstairs instead of yelling like that? Hey, Mom! What do you want, Willie? Give me a dime, will you? I want to get a call. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Jones. Good evening, good evening Mrs. Mrs. Moran. Moran. How many cones did you have today already? I'm hot. Come on, give me a dime. Well, remember, it's the last one. I'd like to hear one of my kids talking to me like that. Here. Catch it. Now remember, that's the last one. Don't come home so late, will it? Good evening, Mrs. Moran. Why don't you come down and be sociable? Well, I'm, I'm keeping some supper warm for my husband. Well, maybe I will for just a minute. She has her troubles with that Vinnie. I guess she's got her mind on other things. Mr. Sackey was coming again today to see her. That's terrible. Wouldn't you think a woman her age... Two times already this week I see him coming here. Well... I seen him myself one day last week. He was coming out of the house just as I was going in with the yeah. dog. Good morning, Mrs. Jones, he says to me as if butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. Good morning, I says to him, looking him straight in the eye. Shh, be careful, she's coming. My goodness, ain't it hot? Yeah, I feel like a wet dish rag myself. I'd like to have gone to the park concert tonight if Rosa got home in time. Ain't she come home yet? No, I think maybe she had to work overtime. Well, all mine ever comes home for is to sleep. Olga! Olga! But to the baby, she's crying again. Olga! What them foreigners don't know about bringing up a baby at fill a book. Foreigners know just as much as other people, Mrs. Cho. Oh, well, the Germans is different. More like the Irish. What I'm talking about. Good evening, about. ladies. Oh, good evening, Mr. Buchanan. Awful hot, ain't it? It's not the heat I mind as much as it is the humidity. Yeah, it makes everything stick to you. How's your wife, Mr. Buchanan? Well, she's afraid to go out of the house. Thinks maybe she can't get back in time. In case, uh, uh you know. Oh, yeah, I was the same way with my Vincent. <laughs> afraid to take a step. The trouble is, I can't get her to eat a thing. Oh, well, tell her she must keep up her strength. She's got two to feed, you know. Yes, I know. Excuse me, she's calling. You'd think it was him that was having the baby. Well, she's such a puny little thing. Well, that's the way it goes. The little skinny ones have them, and the big strong ones don't. <coughs> Evening. Some baby of a day. You've been working all this while, Frank? I'll say I've been working. Dress rehearsing since 12 o'clock with lights in this weather. Tomorrow I gotta go to Stamford for the tryout. Oh, you're going to Stamford tomorrow? Sure, the whole crew's going. Why, what about it? <laughs> Nothing. What I want's a good wash. I've been sweating like a horse all day. My husband, too. He's sweating terrible. Mine don't. There's some people that just naturally do, and then there's others that don't. Rose home? No, I think maybe she had to work overtime. Never heard of nobody working nights in a real estate office. The head of the firm died, and the funeral's tomorrow, so I thought that maybe... It's about this place to know what her daughter's doing. Things are different nowadays, Mr. Moran. Yeah, well, not in my family. They ain't gonna be no different. Hello, Mr. Wright. Evening. 
Good evening, ladies. Good evening, Mr. Jones. Hmm. Guess your hubby's feeling the heat, Mrs. Moran. Oh, men are all alike. They're all easy enough to get along with so long as everything goes the way they want it to. But once it don't, good night. Yes, that's true, Mrs. Jones. I often think it's a shame that people don't seem able to live together in peace and quiet without making each other miserable. Well, what I say is, you get married for better or for worse. And if it turns out for the worse, well, all you can do is make the best of it. I think the trouble is that people don't make allowances. They don't seem to realize that everybody wants a kind word now and then. Good evening, folks. Is it hot enough for you? Good evening. I don't know when we've had a day like this before. Six dead in Chicago and no relief in sight. Well, it's good for the milk business. Yes. You hardly get the milk in the morning before it turns sour. You should make schmear case. Oh, yes. My wife makes it, too. Well, how is your wife, Mr. Sankey? You were telling me that she had a cold. Was I? Oh, well, that was a couple of weeks ago. Sure, she's all right again now. You got a family, too, ain't you? Yes, yes. I have two little girls. Well, I told my wife I'd go down to the drugstore and get her some nice cold ginger ale. Well, if you ask me, all that gassy stuff don't do you a bit of good. Well, I guess you're right at that. Still, it cools you off. Well, see you all again, folks. Is that that fellow Sankey? Yeah, Mr. Sankey. He's a collector for the milk company. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Cushing. Cushing. How's your mother today, Miss Cushing? Why, she complains about the heat. A woman her age, you know. Well, I'm just going down to get her a little ice cream. Between you and I, I don't think her mother's long for this world. Poor Miss Cushing. She just spent her whole life looking after her mother. <laughs> Well, I hope to tell you, after all I've done for my kids, I expect them to look after me in my old age. Oh, I don't know. It seems as if a person ought to get more out of life than just looking after somebody else. Well, I... I guess I'd better go look for Willie. My husband doesn't like it if he stays out late. Did you get that? Going to look for Willie. Can you beat it? It's just terrible. Do you think she's just going out looking for this guy, Sankey? Oh, ain't men the limit. What do you suppose he come walking by here for? The way he stands there and looks and looks at her. Well, what about the look she was giving him? Why, you'd have thought it was Ruddy Valley instead of the milk collector. Someday her husband is killing him. Well, it's no more than he deserves, the little rabbit. Going around, breaking up decent people's homes. Good evening, folks. Just like who's us on the radio. Do you think Morant is wise to what's going on? Well, if he ain't, there must be something the matter with him. I just saw them together, the two of them. What did I tell you? It was awful, isn't it? It looks to me like this thing is getting pretty serious. You didn't serious. notice whether they was kissing or anything, did you? To tell you the truth, Mrs. Jones, I felt so ashamed for her. Now, Moran's coming. She's become my wife. Why, um, she said she was just going around the corner to look for Willie. Oh. Yeah. Well, I guess I'd better be getting back to my mother. Good night. Good night, Miss Cushing. Good night. Good night, Mr. Moran. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Papa, here's your tea. Haven't you finished your paper yet? It makes it so hot with the light on. All right. Put it out. Put it out. There is anyhow nothing to read in the papers. Nothing but divorce, scandal, and murder. You wouldn't think anyone would want to read all that Hebrew writing, would you? 
I don't see how they make head nor tail out of it myself. Well, I guess you'll be alone when you're a kid. Well, you look at your hubby, Mrs. S. Hello, Margarita. Hey, what's ice cream calling? Nice and fresh ice cream calling. Give me your violin, Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. Jonas. Here. Is a corner for you. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Fiorentino. And Mrs. Fiorentino, one nice and fresh for you two. It makes me too fat, sir. No, no, five or ten pounds a more, and nobody can tell her the difference. <laughs> Any Mr. Jonas. Oh, yeah, well, at that, thanks, thanks. And Mr. Moran. Oh, I got me pipe. Oh, you like the pipe about the ice cream, eh? Right. Mr. Coughlin, yes. No, And Mr. Coughlin. No, no, thanks, thanks. Mr. Olsen, you like the corner. Sure, eh? much obliged. Mmm. <laughs> Tastes good, eh? You betcha. Kinda cools you off a little. Sure cool you off. I'm wet. Wet just to like it come out from the bed top. It's a hot like a hell in the park. Two, three thousand people, everybody sweating and smelling like a menagerie. <laughs> That's that Miss Simpson. Miss Hildebrand ain't come home yet. Do you know when she'll be back? Well, she just went around at the picture theater. She's coming now. Mr. Hildebrand, hurry up, hurry up. It's a lady here. Where have you been, Mrs. Hildebrand? <coughs> to a moving picture show? Yes, ma'am. Where did you get the money? It was only 75 cents. 75 cents is a lot when you're being dispossessed. I suppose it came out of the money we gave you to buy groceries with. Is this your conception of philanthropy? You'll be pleased good enough to mind your own business. You should go home and read in your Bible the life of Christ. Will you listen to who's talking about Christ? Nobody's going to give you any money to spend on moving picture shows. Oh, what's the matter, you lady? Here, take the money and go to the picture show every night. Much. And think about Thank you. We better go inside. Yes. We can't stay here and talk to you. Yes, ma'am. Wouldn't she give you a pain? I tell you the old trouble. She living all alone and she ain't got no sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your wife now, Mr. Moran. Is Rose home yet, Frank? No, she ain't. Where have you been all this while? Why, I've been out looking for Willie. I'll give him a good phantom when I get hold of him. Oh, don't we be frank. All boys are wild like that. Sure, my boy Vincent was the same way. And look at him today, driving his own taxi and making a good living. It's all right about that. Excuse me. Tomorrow they're going to throw Mr. Hillbrand out on the street, eh? Yes, they are. And you ought to help her realize the value of money. No, no, lady. I give her a couple of dollars. Make her feel good. Make me feel good. Don't hurt anybody. Yes, it does. It's bad for her character. <laughs> you make me laugh. Nobody's asking your opinion. That's all right. I'm telling you without asking. All the same, you people are the first to ask for help. Good. Oh, oh, my back, I tell you something will maybe do good your character. This is nothing but another device for pauperizing the working class. Now he's shooting off his face again. Papa, it's time to go to bed. When the rich steal from the workers, a million dollars they give to the poor a thousand. Well, if you don't pay your rent, you gotta move. Oh, but it doesn't seem right, though, to put a poor woman out of her home. For her husband to run away, that was not right either. Well, there ought to be a law against women going around stealing other women's husbands. So long as the institution of private property exists, the workers will be at the mercy of the property only class. Oh, can all that hooey. I'm making a good living, see, and I ain't doing no kicking. We got prosperity, this country. Put the tools of industry in the hands of the working classes, and this can be accomplished only by a social revolution. Yeah, well, we don't want no revolution in this country. I know all about that stuff. Teaching kids there ain't no God and their grandfathers was monkeys. If you don't like the way things is run here, why don't you go back where you come Everybody from? Everybody has the right to his own opinion, Mr. Moran. We don't want no foreigners coming in telling us how to run things. It's nothing wrong to be a foreigner. Many good people are foreigners. Sure, look at Cristoforo Columbus, the first man that discovered America. He's an Italian. You to like me. First man is Leif Erikson. What's that? First man is Leif Erikson. No, no, come. No. Christopher Colombo is the first man that discovered America. Everybody know that. Erikson was really the first discoverer. No, Colombo. But Columbus was the first to open America to settlement. Just what I'm saying. Colombo, the first man. First man is Leif Erikson. What we need in this country is a little more respect for law and order. Look what's happened to people's homes with all this divorce and one thing or another. 
I tell you, it's time something was done to put the fear of God in the people. Yeah. You're right. Oh, sometimes I think maybe they're only trying to get a little something out of life. Something they ought not to have, is that it? When private property is abolished, the family will no longer have any reason to exist. Well, it's got to exist, see? Husbands and wives loving and honoring each other like they said they would when they were spliced. And any dirty Bolshevik that says any difference liable to get his head busted up and get a lot of All right, I should argue with a low-class gangster. Who's a gangster? What are you? All right, all right, let me go. If he talks like that in Italy, Mussolini gonna give him a casserole. <laughs> oh, why can't people be kind to each other? Why can't they live together in peace? Live in peace. You're always talking about living in peace. Well, I guess I'll go around to Callahan's and shoot a little pool. Well, don't be coming home lit all hours of the morning. Uh, lay off that stuff. I'll be back in a half an hour. Are you coming along, Mr. Moran? No, I'm going to wait a while. Are you coming in? No, oh, it's too hot to go to bed. Well, don't make a noise when you come in. How do you like the concerto, eh? I didn't like it. Those Italian organ grinder tunes aren't music. Now, what do you call music? Tchaikovsky? Tchaikovsky? And Beethoven. What I like is... Sprinzel from Mendelssohn. Good jazz band every time. It's not music, I said. Black you here. But Beethoven expresses the emotions of the human soul. It's not good, Beethoven. He make you cry. I want to lay. The kind of music will make you happy. He make you feel good. La 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 mobile echo. You want to hand. How beautiful. He make you feel fine. He make you you want to dance. Let me give you music. Look out, you two, you're blocking traffic. Say, go right ahead. Don't let me stop you. Oh, that's all right. I guess we danced about well enough. Pretty hot night for dancing. Yes, it is. Well, I guess I'll be going along. Good night, folks. Good night. Margarita, stop the music. Who is that bird? Why, that's Mr. Sankey. He's a collector for the milk company. Why, uh, he's just been around the drugstore to get his wife some ginger ale. What I want to know is why ain't Rose home yet? Well, I told you, Frank. That's all right about that, but I want him home and not batting around the street, you hear me? Who's been saying things to you? That big stiff Joe Conley, that's who. I'll knock his eyes out, that dirty louse. Here, here, here. Cut out the swearing. You hear, I'll give you something to ball for. What did he say to you, huh? Oh, it's like, go oh, my yard. Oh, what difference does it make? Nobody's what asking you. What did he say? Up to Bentley here, Marty. Go on, beat it. Wait, Billy, I'll go along. Are you coming up now, Frank? No, I ain't. I'm going around to Callahan's and get a drink. And if Rose ain't home when I get back, there's going to be trouble. Well, good night, all. Good night. Good night. Miss Fiorentino. Miss Fiorentino. You missed it. Oh. Well, who should come along but Sankey? 
So there was the three of them. Mr. Morant looking at Sankey as if he'd like to kill him. Did he say something? Not after Sankey was gone. Who's that, says he? He's the milk collector, says she. It's you so And then Willie comes home. The boy tell him his mama is a bad woman and Willie lick him. Well, and what else is she? Stop it. Stop it. Leave her alone, can't you? Why do you always have to tear it to pieces? Why does every... Ah! Well, he must be off his nut, too. It's a fine house to be living in, ain't it? Well, good night, all. <sighs> Wait a minute, Miss Olson. I'll go with you. Marguerite, if I catch you making whoopee with the milkman, I gonna break your neck. Stop your foolishness, Lippo, and come to bed. <laughs> Halfway down the block. This is it. Seventy. There you are. Thanks. Good night, Mr. I've had a lovely time. Well, you're not going to leave me like this, are you? I've hardly had a chance to talk to you. We've been doing nothing but talking since six o'clock. No, we haven't. We've been eating and dancing. We're all tired. Please don't, Mr. East. There's somebody coming. Good evening, Mrs. Olson. Good evening, Miss Mirant. She's got the cutest little baby ever saw. Yeah, that's great. Listen, Rose. I've, I've really got to go upstairs now. Rose, I'm just crazy about you. Please, let me go now. Kiss me goodnight. No. Just one little kiss. No. Yes. It was nice of you to do that. Why not? Didn't you like it? It's not that. You've got a wife, haven't you? I tell you, I'm clean off my nut about you. Look out. Good evening, Mrs. Jones. Good evening. I think your father's been kind of worried about you. Has he? Yeah. Well, I got to give Queenie her exercise. Soon have all the neighbors talking about me. Why not snap out of it all? Out of what? This working, the whole business. You're not wise to yourself, Rose. Why, with your looks and personality and brains, you shouldn't keep looking at me at the office all the time. I guess I just can't keep my eyes off you. Well, I've got it all figured out. The first thing you do is throw up your job, see? But then you get yourself a job on the stage. How could I get a job on the stage? Easy. I've got three or four friends in the show business. I don't think it'd be any good on the stage. All you have to do is put up a little front, get yourself a swell little apartment, throw a couple of parties, and you're all set. You do like me, don't you? I don't know if I do or not. Why, of course you do. Think of all the good times we could have together. You with a little apartment and all. What about your wife? The way I figured, she wouldn't have to know anything about it. I don't think it's the way I'd want things to be. Oh, a sweetheart. No. Look, there's my father. There'll only be an argument if he sees you. All right. Good night. I'll see you at the old man's funeral tomorrow. Hello, Pop. Who's that just talking to? It's Mr. Easter. He's the manager of our office. You been out with him? Yeah, I had to stay late to get out some letters, and he took me to dinner. Fine time to be getting home from dinner. Well, we danced afterwards. A little petting on the side, is that it? No, it isn't. Is Bert married? I thought so. Now, get this straight. No married man ain't gonna come nosing around my family, get me? Quiet, Pop. There's somebody coming. I don't care who's coming. I think the baby's coming. Is there anything I can do, Mr. Buchanan? Well, if you wouldn't mind phoning to the doctor, here's his number. Sure, I will. You go back to your wife. Yes, I'd better. Tell him I'd go up to Mrs. Buchanan. 
All right. Hello, Rose. What's your hurry? Mr. Buchanan. Say, your little friend's kind of cute, ain't she? Say, according to you, anything in the skirt's kind of cute. Yeah, but there ain't none of them as cute as you, May. Oh, yeah? Honest, I mean it. How about a little kiss? Well, you might show a little enthusiasm. Say, you seem to think I ought to hang out a flag every time some bozo decides to wipe off his mouth on me. The trouble with you is you need another little snifter. Nope, I can't swallow any more of that rotten gin of yours. Oh, it ain't so, voice. I don't mind it no more since I had that brass lining put in me stomach. Well, happy days. Hey, then what are you doing, emptying the flask? I thought you didn't want none. Aw, oh, can't you take a joke? Hey! <laughs> I feel like a tree alarm fire. Woo! Hey, shut up, will you? You'll be waking the whole neighborhood. What the heck do I care? Woo! Woo! Kiss me, kid. I'll say. Come on. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? Come on, I'm telling you. Let's go down to Fred Hennessy's apartment. <laughs> I ought to go home. <laughs> Say, baby, kneel down that sidewalk, will you? Come on. Sweet <laughs> Papa. Hello, Rose. How's the milkman? <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> Miss Morant. Miss Morant. Did you get the doctor? Yes, he'll be here right away. Well, that's certainly very nice of you. You don't know how much I appreciate it. She seems to be getting worse. Danny! Excuse me, she's calling. If there's anything I can do... Thanks, I'll let you know. Hello, Rosie. What's your hurry? I've got to go in. Ah, uh, you don't want to go in yet. Come on, I'll take you for a little ride in me. Hey. Please, let me pay. Say, you got a lot of strength, let ain't you? Let me show you, big uh, uh, Take your hands off her. Well, look who's here. What do you want? You keep your hands off her. Oh, yeah? Wee, Jakey. Now what do you got to say? You let him alone. If you touch her again. If you touch her again. Ah, shut up, you little kite. You big kite. Come on, get up, why don't you? <laughs> What's going on here? Hello, Ma. Hello, Vincent. Oh, just a little friendly argument. You better keep your hands to yourself here, Esther. Is that so? Who said so, huh? Uh, <laughs> oh, come on, Vincent. All right, I'm coming. Good night, dearie. <laughs> Some chic you picked out for yourself. You seem to have plenty of admirers, Miss Moran. But I guess you come by it natural. The dirty rat. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. It's all right, Sam. Never mind. Oh, I'm a coward. I know you're not, Sam. He's just a big tough, that's all he is. He can do anything he likes to me. What of it? It won't be that way for long. In a few years from now, you'll be so far above him, you won't even remember he's alive. Oh, I sometimes think I'll never get anywhere. Well, of course you will. Sam, there's something I want to ask you. What is it, Rose? I wouldn't dream of asking anyone but you. Do you think it's true what they're saying about my mother? Guess it is, isn't it? Oh, they were talking here before. I couldn't stand it any longer. Why are we going living in a place like this? What can I do, Sam? My father means well enough, but it, he's always sort of making you freeze up. That's the whole trouble, I guess. Mother never had anyone to really love her. Only the way things are now, it, all the neighbors whispering and spying. Sometimes I get a feeling... I don't know. Oh, I wish I could help you, Rose. You do help me, Sam. Just by being nice and sympathetic. There's so few people you can really talk to. I get blue and discouraged sometimes, too. Like this morning when I woke up. I felt so miserable. Then I started walking to the office through the park. Everything was so fresh and green. I felt things weren't so bad after all. I got to thinking about that poem you said for me. Remember? Say it again, Sam. 
free. Sail forth. Steer for the deep waters only. Reckless old soul exploring. I with thee, and thou with me. That we may brave where mariner has not yet dared to go. And we will risk the ship, ourselves and all. Yes, that's it. That's just what I felt. Like risking everything and not being afraid. Miss Moran! Would you mind phoning to the doctor again? He should be here by now. Yes, yeah, sure I will. Wait, maybe this is him now. Yes, yes, that's him. Oh, doctor, I guess you're none too soon. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Just don't get excited. Rose, you know what time it is? Yes, Pop, I'll be right up. Don't be making me call you again now, do you hear? I better go up now, Sam. Good night. Will you kiss me goodnight, Rose? Of course I will. You wait and see. You're going to do big things someday. I got lots of confidence in you. Do you really mean it, Rose? Of course I do. And don't you forget it. Good night. Good night. Good night, Sam. Good night, Rose, dear.
just wake up. Oh, she won't, I told you. You'd better go and get some sleep yourself. Well, good night. Good night. Well, how about kissing me good night? Oh, ain't you had enough kissing for one night? Well, say it. That's the way you feel about it. Oh. Gonna be another scorcher, eh, Charlie? You said it. Ah, oh, what are you looking at? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Who's there? That you can't do this. But I can. Ha ha, does you couldn't? Ha ha. Oh gosh. Can't you ever get over your race prejudice? I've told you a thousand times that the Jews are no better than anyone else. Look at her family. What's her father? Nothing but an illiterate ruffian. And her mother. Are you starting to? Riley! All right, Papa. Come in, Sam, or Papa will be making long speeches again. All right, I'm coming. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Ferentino. I guess you know that the baby came last night. Oh, no, I did not hear a fear about it. 3.30 this morning. I've been up the whole night. A boy, is it? No, it's a little girl. <laughs> Lippo. Morning, I was just telling your what wife you that the baby... Mr. Buchanan has a little girl? That's fine. Marguerite, why don't you have any baby, eh? I must go and make the coffee. That is a funny thing. You got a little skinny wife, and she got the baby. My Margarita, big and fat, she not gonna have the baby. Well, say, I've got to be getting down to the drugstore. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Miss Moran. It's awful hot again, isn't it? In Italy, where I'm born, is a much more hot like here. I remember when I am a little boy, I lay down on the ground, under the lemon tree, and I sleep all day. Under a lemon tree? That must have been wonderful. Well, I'd love to go to Italy. I don't suppose I ever will. Why, sure. Someday you're going to marry a rich fellow, and he take you to Italy everywhere. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Madigan. Anyhow, I don't think I'd be happy marrying a man with money if I didn't care for him, too. What's the matter, eh? Huh? You love a little kite, eh? Huh? No, I don't. I don't love anybody. At least I don't think I do. All right, Margarita. You marry a fellow with plenty of money. It's much better. Fast, fast, the water, right? Why, Willie, you can't go to school like that. Oh, for the love of Mike. You're getting big enough to comb your own hair without being told. There. Now you look very nice. Sod your old man! Why don't you look where you're going, you little shrimp? Nuisance, boys that age. 
Oh, good morning, Mrs. Jones. Good morning. How's little Miss Buchanan getting along? Well, she's sleeping now, poor thing. I really didn't think last night she'd have the strength to pull through. Well, it's something we all got to go through. Hmm. After all, what more does any woman want than watching her kids grow up and a husband to look out for her? Yes, that's true. Yeah. The world would be a whole lot better off if there was more that lived up to it. Well, I got to go get my May up out of bed. Oh, Miss Morant, if you don't mind my being so bold, I'd think twice before I'd let any child of mine bring that Sam Kaplan into the family. I don't see what that has to do with you, Mrs. Jones. Oh, well, there's no need getting huffy about it. <laughs> I'm sure it don't make no difference to me what you do. Come on, Queenie. She and those wonderful children of hers. Oh, there's a lot of people that never seem to be happy unless they're making trouble for somebody. I wonder if it wouldn't be better for us all if we moved out to the suburbs somewhere. I don't think Pop would do it. Oh, are you leaving now, Frank? Looks like it, don't it? Where have you been all this while? Oh, you know where I've been, up to Mrs. Buchanan. Say, how about looking after your own home and letting Buchanan's look after theirs? Oh, well, all I'm trying to do is to be a little bit neighborly. A woman's got a right to stay in her own home, looking after her husband and children. Well, what else have I been doing all these years, I'd like to know. See that you don't forget it, that's all. That lie will be trouble. Oh, all right, Frank, don't say any more, please. When will you be back? Tomorrow? When I'm through with my work, that's when. What are you so anxious to know for? Well, I just asked, that's all. Oh, you just asked, eh? Just in case somebody wanted to come around calling, is that it? Why, no, it isn't. It isn't anything of the kind. Well, you've got no right to be talking to me like that in front of my own daughter. You've got no right. No, you haven't. Ma. Come back here, you. Come back, you hear? You stay right here. Pa. Pa, if you were only a little nicer to her, maybe things would be different. Say, ain't I always been a good husband to her? And I always looked after her? It's not that, Pa. It's somebody to be sort of nice and gentle, that's all it is. So she got you headed the same way, eh? Huh? Running around nights of married men. You don't need to worry about me, Pop. A girl nowadays can look out for herself. But not her. She needs she need somebody to look after her. Oh, can all that talk. And don't let me catch that other bozo hanging around here either. That's all I gotta say. Pop, listen. Couldn't we get a little house somewhere? Queens or somewhere like that? This place suits me all right. I sort of thought it'd be nice for all of us. Maybe if Ma had a real nice home and some real nice neighbors. Forget it. I don't know when I'll be back, see? Why, hello, Mr. Morant. You off on a little trip? Yeah. Don't you forget what I told you, you hear me? Why do you look so sad? A young girl like you should not look so sad. Mr. Kaplan, why must things be the way they are? Why must people always be fighting and having troubles instead of just sort of being happy together? <laughs> My dear young lady, this is something which all the philosophers have been unable to answer. It is my opinion that most unhappiness can be traced to economic causes. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Mary. Hello. Hello. We're going to meet Mr. Zack today. Oh, what a shame. Yes, ma'am. My father ran away so we couldn't pay the rent. Oh, come on, Mary. We have to go to school now. Goodbye. Isn't that awful? In a civilized world, such things could not happen. You mean if there were different laws? They're not laws. We got already too many laws. We must have action, not laws. The working Excuse class... Excuse me, here's my mother. I got a little chicken to make Mrs. Buchanan some soup. Did he go? Yes, Ma. Oh. I've always tried to be a good wife to him, Ralph. But it didn't seem to make any difference to him. I know just the way you feel about him, Ralph. Do you, Rose? Yes, ma, I do. Honest, I do. But it... It's on account of... Are you going to start to? I thought you'd be the one that would feel different. I do, ma, really I do. Oh, well, what's the good of being alive if you can't get a little something out of life? Well, is it hot enough for you today? It's awful, isn't it? You said it. Still along about January, we'll all be wishing we had a little of this weather. Ma, if I say something, will you listen to me? Yes, 
Sure I will, Rose. Don't let's do anything you say, only you... Well, what I was thinking was, if you didn't come around here so much, maybe. You see what I mean, Mark? Well, every person in the world's got to have somebody to talk to. You can't live without somebody to talk to. It's only on account of Pop. I'm scared of what he's likely to do if he starts drinking. Oh, well, all right. Sometimes I think I'd be better off if I were dead. Mom. Oh, Mr. Buchanan, I got a little chicken to make your wife some good nourishing soup. Well, say, you've got to let me pay you for it. Oh, never mind about that. I called up the office and they told me not to come down today. Well, that'll be a comfort to her to have you around. Yes, that's what I thought, too. Well, I'd better be getting upstairs now. Well, I'll be up later with the soup. Well, thanks. You've been a mighty good neighbor, Mrs. Morant. Oh, he's an awful nice young fellow. Nice and gentle. It makes you feel sort of sorry for him. Well, I'd better get up and start this chicken. Are you coming home for lunch, Rose? Yes, I'll be back soon. The funeral's over. Oh, all right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's another awful day, isn't it? Yes, and when you have to keep 40 children quiet. Thank goodness in two weeks school closes, otherwise I think I'd go crazy. Miss Moran, I'd like to talk to you about my brother. Wait. Well, certainly, Miss Kaplan. I guess you know he's only finishing college this month. Yes, of course I do. And then he has to go to law school. It'll be years before he can think about marriage. Well, we're just good friends, that's all. I've had to work hard enough to get him as far as he is. And if you're such a good friend, you shouldn't take his mind away from his work. Don't you think there are other things in the world besides just work? Don't you think I know that? Maybe you think I'm only an old maid school teacher without any feelings. Oh, I, I don't, I don't. But I haven't tried to vamp Sam, honestly, I haven't. No. He sees a pretty face and right away he forgets. Well, I know I haven't got as much brains as Sam or as you. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Only, he's all I've got in the world. Hello, Rose. Hello, Sam. Please don't tell him what I said. No, I won't. Want some coffee, Kate? No. Sam, tell me, is there any special way you have to act in a synagogue? In a synagogue? Yes, this funeral I'm going to is in a synagogue. I thought there might be something special you have to do. Never in my life I've been in a synagogue. You mean your family didn't bring you up to believe in anything? No. I don't know. Only it seems better to believe in something that makes you a little happy. There's not much to be happy about living in a place like this. Oh, I know things aren't the way you want them to be. They aren't for me either. Someday it'll be different. I just know it will. In the meantime, let's try to make the best of it. The best of it? What have you got to be happy about? Tell me, I'd like to know. Well, lots of things, Sam. Just being alive and looking at the faces of people you like and hearing them laugh. Roughhousing with your kid brother. And, I don't know, listening to a good band and dancing. I think there's a lot. Well, now I wish you'd be a little bit happy about things, too. Does it really make any difference to you whether I am or not? You know it does. You're the best friend I've ever had. I can't think of anything but you, Rose. Sam, there's something I want to ask your advice about. A man in our office wants to put me on the stage. The stage? But don't you know what he wants? Look out, Sam. Here's that tough from upstairs. Hello, Rosie. Have you been here all night talking to the little yurt? Hello, Martins. Shit! Let me go. Let him alone. <laughs> Gee, I'd hate to get into a mix-up with him. Got a date for tonight, kid? Yes, I have. Yeah? Who with? The milkman? Shut up, you. What'd you say? I thought I heard you say something, you... <laughs> Fighting Kaplan, the pride of Jerusalem. <laughs> For crying out loud. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'd just like to run away. Would you go with me, Sam? Yes, anywhere. 
I've heard the people are much nicer and friendly when you get outside of New York. But you couldn't give up your law work. I'd give up anything to be with you, Rose. I wouldn't let you. Good morning, Rose. Good morning, Mr. Easton. I just happened to be around the corner, so I thought we might as well go to the funeral together. I hardly expected to see you around here. I want you to meet my friend, Mr. Kaplan. Glad to know you, Mr. Kaplan. How do you do? It's awful hot again, isn't it? Yes, uh, we'll pick up a cab at the corner. No, I'd rather walk. Well, whatever you say. Well, I guess it's time we got started. Goodbye, Sam. I'll see you later. Good morning, Mr. Kaplan. Glad Bye. to have met you. You must have seen my father wasn't around just now. Why, did you say anything last night? Pretty hot day for walking. Not if you keep in the sh shade. Oh, no, not if you can. <laughs> Only there isn't much shade this side of Columbus. Mr. Teresa, how long do you suppose the funeral will last? Oh, I don't know. I imagine. Uh... You see, my mother isn't so well, and I was thinking. That... Oh, that's all right. Just so you put in an appearance. You can duck out as soon as it starts. I understand it's a custom to keep your hat on in a synagogue. Who'd have thought old Jacobson would kick off so suddenly? Well, that's the way it goes. Here today and gone tomorrow. You never know who's going to get it next. No, you don't. talk with you. Are you sure it's all right? Yes, he's gone to Stanford. Well, how about later? Uh, no, Rose will be home in an hour. She's not working today. All right.
Mr. Moran. I thought you was off for Stanford this morning. Be brave, you hear? I got 
Color, what's his name? Trying to climb out of the window. Fine chance he had to get away with Moran coming in so sudden like. Look! There's where he broke the window. See it? Can you imagine what those two must have felt like when he walked in and caught them like that? Well, he just happens to be one of the ones that finds out. Believe me, there are plenty of husbands who don't know the half of what goes on up to him while they're doomed to him making a living. Ah, uh, he's in again. Shut up, you little weasel, can't you? Uh, keep moving, ladies. No loitering around here. Say, have they got him yet? Why ain't you, Hyde? He was last seen flying over Nova Scotia on his way to Paris. Who are you trying to kid? Would you let us come up and look around? Why, well, sure, sure. Bring the babies up, too. The commissioner is serving tea up here at 4.30. You're awful smart, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's why they put me on the entertainment committee. I'm Handsome Harry Murphy, the boy comedian of Brooklyn. Frisch! Say, I better be getting back. The madam would throw a duck fit if she thought I brought her precious dumpling into a neighborhood like this. Over the river, girls. Seeing the funny papers. Oh, don't be so cheeky. Drop in again when you're in the neighborhood. And tell Mrs. Vanderbilt Harry was asking for her. Is Miss Moran up there, officer? No, she ain't been back since she went off to the hospital this morning. Oh, officer. Have they called him yet? No, not yet. But we'll get him all right. Have they caught him yet? No. Well, I've been down police headquarters all this while. What does he want here? Well, pardon me, but maybe you can tell me where I can find Miss Morant. Why, no, I can't. Was there something special you want to see her about? Why, uh, I'm a friend of hers. Yeah. Well, I guess she'll have need of all the friends she's got. Now, can you imagine a thing like that happening right here in this house? I tell everybody someday he killed her. Well, I ain't saying it's right to kill anyone, but if anybody had a reason, he certainly did. Why, you ought to heard some of the questions they was asking me down police headquarters. I could just feel myself getting redder and redder. Hey, hey, how about the double murder? Hey, Fred, about the double murder, Fred. How about Fred, about the double murder? Hey, Fred. First, ma'am, all about the double murder. It's my last paper, ma'am. I want to go home. All about the double murder. It's the last one, ma'am. Pictures and everything. About the double murder. It's the latest. About the double murder, ma'am. All about it. Rose. Have oh, they got him yet? I know they haven't. Here, let me check your money. Well, I hope he got away. He'd never have done it if he'd been in his right mind. The minute I heard about it, I went around to the hospital and I said you'd left. She never opened her eyes. They did everything they could for her. It didn't help. Can't I get you something? A drink or something? No, I... I'm all right. It's so hot. If you want to go up to my flat and lay down for a minute. No, thanks. I, I've got to go up and get some things I need. Say, you don't want to go up there. Oh, the place is a sight. Well, you're liable to go into a faint or something. I guess nothing can be any worse than what's already happened. I've got to change my dress. Bought her a white dress and white silk stocking. She always liked to look pretty. Yeah, white is the nicest. Looks so quiet and natural. I think she was asleep. Yeah, it was the same way with my mother. Why, you'd have thought she was going to get up the next minute. Well, I got 
to go out and get me some lunch. You certainly never know when you get up in the morning what the day is going to bring. I guess I'd better be going up, too. Oh, but listen here. You can't go through this all alone. A kid like you, that's why I came around. It's awfully nice of you, Mr. Easter, but I don't need any help. Really, I don't. But how about a place to live and all that? Well, I guess I'll have to find a place where Willie and I can live. See, that there's nobody but me to look after him now. Well, why won't you let me help you? It's terribly nice of you, Mr. Easter, but I don't need any help. I'm young and strong and able to take care of myself. See, I, I've sort of been thinking things over. I honestly don't think I care about going on stage. Oh, but say, you've got me all wrong, Rose. I just want to help you, that's all. I'm not trying to put anything over on you. Rose! Rose! You poor thing, this is terrible, terrible. Yes, it is. But I had a feeling all along that something terrible was going to happen. How could you do such a thing? Thanks awfully for coming over, Mr. Easter. I don't know when I'll be able to get back to the office. Why, that's all right about that. Only in the meantime, I wish that... Uh... If I need any help, I'll let you know. All right. But don't forget. Goodbye. Well. Goodbye. Miss Kaplan, it's sort of silly of me, I guess, but... I'm kind of afraid to go up there alone. Anything I can do. Thanks ever so much. He would say that. And so I just looked at him for a while without saying anything. And then I said, my dear boy, in this day and age, I said, why, even Sinclair Lewis used to write for the Saturday Evening Post, I said. Exactly. And what do you think well, there's been some excitement around here today, hasn't there? How can we call ourselves civilized when we see that sex jealousy has the power to awaken in us the primitive passions of the savage? Yes, that's true, too. Well, I just phoned to the doctor. This thing has given my wife kind of a relapse. She thought a lot of Mrs. Morant. Rose home yet? Upstairs with Shirley. Oh, this is a terrible thing which has happened. I found Willie at school. Took him over to his grandmother's in Brooklyn. I've been drinking, Rose. You see what I mean? And all this talk was going around. I just went clean off me nut, that's all. What'll they do to you, Pop? It's a chair for me, I guess, but I don't care. It's her I'm thinking of, the way she looked at me. All right, that's all. Come Talk on. to me a minute, can't you? What's going to happen to you, Rose? I'll be all right, Pop. You don't need to worry about me. I ain't been a very good father, have I? Don't worry about that, Pop. But it ain't that I ain't meant to be. It's just the way things happen to turn out, that's all. Keep, keep your eye on Willie, won't I'm you, Rose? I'm going to do everything I can for him, Pop. You're a good girl, Rose. You always was a good girl. Oh, Come on, Rose. Miss. Come on. 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 Come on, move 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 on. Come
What about Willie Smith? Oh, I told him an accident had happened. Come on, get back. I guess I'll tell him to tell him what happened. He'll only find out for himself that the papers are all full of the drones. Yes, Miss Kaplan? There's a chicken here that I found on the gas stove. Chicken? Yes. Oh, I remember. Our mother's going to make some soup for Mrs. Buchanan. It won't keep long in this weather. No. I really think Mrs. Buchanan ought to have the good of it. All right, I'll take it up to her. It, it was only a few hours ago she was standing there telling me about the chicken. I've got to go up and get my things. Wait a minute, Rose. I want to talk to you. What are you going to do? Well, I, I really think the best thing for Willie and me would be to get out of New York. You know, like we were saying this morning. If you go, I'll go with you. The, Sam, dear. Oh, I don't care anything about my career. It's you I care about, Rose. Don't leave me. I like you so much, Sam. I like you better than anybody I know. I love you, Rose. Let me go with you. It would be so nice for us to be together. But it can't be, Sam. Not yet. Oh, it's only because we love each other and belong to each other that we can find the strength to escape all this. No, Sam. Why do you say no? Do you want to go through life alone, never loving everyone? Never having anyone to love you? Sam. I want love more than anything else in this world. But, but loving and belonging aren't the same thing. Sam, dear, listen. If, if we say goodbye to each other for a little while, it's going to be better for us in the end. What I think is we should give ourselves a chance to get started first. Just think how young we both are. Let, let's each of us try to work things out for ourselves. You'll see, we won't lose anything by waiting. Do you think so, Rose? Of course I do. I know everything's going to work out the way we want it. I'm so fond of you, Sam. I've got such a lot of confidence in you. I was just telling Sam that I think we ought to say goodbye to each other for a while. I put the things in this suitcase. You've been awfully nice to me, Miss Captain. Don't worry about Sam. Everything's going to be all right with him. I hope so. I just know it will. Goodbye. Goodbye, Rose. You're a sweet girl. You'll be seeing me again someday. I hope so, Rose. Shirley, what's the matter again with Sam? He's crying on the bed. Let him alone, Papa. Can't you?
The film version of Street Scene stayed quite faithful to its original play counterpart, probably owing that to Elmer Rice's role as a screenwriter. The entire tenement set, complete with elevated train tracks, was built on backlot areas of Universal Studios. Close examination can reveal that the extended scenes of the set, such as the street going off into the distance, is actually a well-done matte painting. When the film was originally released, the infamous Hayes Code that ruled Hollywood for a very long time had not been fully implemented yet. Thus, the film had some controversial subject matter in the plot. Unfortunately, the print that survives to this day that was just shown was a recut version with re-edited dialogue in a few scenes. It is unlikely that we'll ever get to hear the original audio. An interesting detail is that this was the first film ever to be broadcast on television syndication, being broadcast on New York City's W2XBS station in 1940. With the outbreak of the Second World War, TV broadcasting would not truly take off until at least one decade afterwards. I hope that you'll join us next week when we jump from the 1930s early sound films into the golden age of cinema and present the 1942 detective drama classic Sherlock Holmes and the Secret Weapon. I'm George Roth and this is your Film of the Century of the Week here on Channel 5.